Next question is from Jin Alexandra. From training clients in advanced age, what did you learn about what long-term habits are essential for lifetime health? I really like this question because, um, at least for me, this is how this all started to come together. Like, um, you know, I talk about how when I first started training, I'd scoff at clients that said they walk every yeah. day and be like, it's not exercise. But after you train enough, you know, older, healthy people, like you get clients, and I would get that, right? Obviously, uh, we deal more with people that are obese and issues and so like that, but I also trained a lot of pretty damn healthy 65, 70-year-olds, mm -hmm. and you start to piece together some common things, the behaviors that they do. Um, the, the first one that comes to mind, and that's why I talk about the walking thing so much, was that was almost every uh, you know advanced age client that I train um, had some sort of a daily practice that was not like crazy strenuous. That it wasn't mm -hmm. like a hardcore workout. It was like I walk three miles yep. every day. They're just active. They just I've I've started that when I was twenty and I never stopped. And they do it every single day. Or they had little things like parking further away and the uh, when they go grocery shopping or you know they love to garden and they they know that they're moving and staying active and so they had just built these these habits into their life that kept them in good shape. Now they weren't in muscular shape. I, they didn't have a bunch. They weren't super strong in the gym. That was why they were hiring me. They were aware enough to know that. But what I noticed is like if you looked on the looked at them and compared them to the average person that was 65 or 70 years old, they looked incredible. Mm -hmm. And it was from their their good habits that they had created. And that was one of the biggest ones that stood out to me. I observed exactly the same thing. The, the daily activity, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's riding their bike uh, every day or walking every day. Swimming. Swimming every day. It was some type of activity that they did every single day. And it was um, it was a leisure activity. Like you said, Adam, it's not like they went for a hard run, right? but it was like, oh yeah, every day my husband and I go for a one hour walk every day. Yeah. You know? and I was like, How long have you been doing this? Oh, I don't know, 30 years, you know, something like that. So daily activity, that was one. Here's the second one um, that I noticed is that they all didn't overeat. Um, yeah. It's a very general one, right? So the diets can be very different. Good, re good relationship with food. Yeah, they mm. just didn't overeat. Like uh, I, I, many, many times, they would invite me over for the to for dinner at their house, or we'd go to a restaurant, and I would notice that when I'd look at their plate, it was appropriate. They just wouldn't fill it up with tons of food. I remember one time I went to a restaurant with there were these two women that I trained, both of them in their seventies. They were both really good friends. I trained them separately, but they were all they were both my clients, and they knew each other. And we went to lunch, uh, and we would go to lunch, um, you know, here and there. So, you know, maybe maybe ten times I went to lunch with them, and each time what they would do is they would order a plate and split it, hmm. and and it was appropriate amount of food, by the way. You know, most restaurants in America, one plate is actually enough for two people. Yeah. And so they would get a burger, and then they'd cut it in half, or they'd get this big salad, and they'd ask for two plates, and they'd cut it in half, and. They were just appropriate levels of food. They just didn't overeat. That was the biggest, uh, you know, thing I saw in common. Yeah, I think, and definitely, I saw what you guys saw, but also too, like, uh, there's a social element there that I noticed oh, that yeah. they would still interact, whether it was family or was friends, it was some kind of community that they were a part of. Uh, and, and along with that, which I thought uh, a few of my clients that were, you know, an advanced age that I felt like were thriving the most uh, would challenge themselves, like every so often, every few months, they would pick up a new hobby. They would do something where they would like learn how to paint landscapes or, uh, you know, like ballroom dancing or, or, or something that's like going to challenge them mentally or physically in some way that just helps keep them stimulated and, and you know, excited to kind of uh, uh, learn something new. No, that's really good. Um, they all, now that I think about it, all of them belonged to groups. Uh, the widows that I trained who mm -hmm. were in their late seventies and eighties, they did things like um, they would play bridge. They'd have these bridge groups. Uh, one woman, her husband passed away, so she would do. She would be on these dating apps and go out dates with men, and she had a very social life. And the studies actually support that. It's a very, very important part uh, of longevity.